Today we're going to be solving a three variable, it's three by three system of equations using the substitution method. So a three variable, if I have three variables that I'm asked to find, I need three equations in order to um, find the values of those variables. So we call that a three by three system of equations, right? Three variables, three equations. So the first thing that you're going to do when you're solving the system of equations is again, just like the elimination method, you're going to write all equations in standard form, right? So your X values line up, your Y values line up, your Z values line up, or your terms, I should say, X terms, Y terms, Z terms, equal sign, and then constant is on the right side of that equal sign. So in this example, they're all in standard form already. What I like to do is, again, just like the elimination method, label my equations so I can refer to them when I'm working through the problem. So equation one, equation two, and equation three. The first thing you do, or the next thing you do when you're solving using substitution is isolate one variable in one equation. So I'm gonna pick an equation that would be easily manipulated, right? I can easily move some terms around to get one variable on one side of the equal sign. And I'm actually going to choose equation two in this case, and I'm going to solve for y. So equation two, negative 2x plus y plus 3z equals 5. I can easily solve for y by adding 2x to both sides, right? That gets rid of it over here. Subtracting 3z from both sides. That gets rid of that. And I'm left with y equals and I'm actually going to write it in standard form. So I've got 2x minus 3z plus 5. So I have solved for or isolated one variable in one equation. And I, you also might see that as I've put the equation in terms of the other variables. Okay, so the next step that you're going to do is you're going to substitute this manipulated equation into the other equations and you're going to simplify. So Let's do that now. I'm gonna change colors here. So I'm gonna look at equation one and I'm going to plug in this expression right here in for y. So in equation one, I have x minus, right? And I'm gonna substitute something in for y, plus two z equals 12. What am I substituting in for y? Two x minus three z plus five. And now we're just going to simplify this, right? So I'm going to be distributing this negative into every term on the inside of the parentheses. So I get x minus 2x plus 3z minus 5, then plus 2z equals 12. And now I'm just going to combine like terms and move that constant to the right. And I'm going to do um, a lot of that at the same time. So let's see, I have an x and a negative 2x. When I combine those, I get negative 1x. So that's negative x. And then I have a 3z and a 2z, so that's plus 5z. And then I can't combine this minus 5 with anything. But I am going to move that to the other side so that my constant is on the right side. So I'm going to write this equation in standard form. So negative x plus 5z, when I add 5 to both sides, I get 17. So here's an equation that I have created in standard form with two variables, and we'll call this equation A. We're actually going to do that exact same thing to the other equation, equation three, right? So we solve for y in equation two, and then um, we substituted that expression into equation one, and so now we're going to do the same thing for equation three. So equation three is 2x plus 3y plus z equals seven. So 2x plus three times, what am I replacing y with, plus z equals seven. So what am I replacing y with? I'm replacing it with two x minus three z plus five. And now we're going to just uh, simplify this just like we did in equation one. So I'm gonna distribute that three. So two x plus six x minus nine z plus 15 plus z equals seven. And now we're gonna combine like terms. So I have 2x plus 6x, and I get 8x. And then negative 9z and positive z is negative 8z. And then I can't combine this uh, 15 with anything. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and do this at the same time to save room. I'm going to subtract 15 
from both sides. So I'm moving this term right here to the other side, essentially, right? So minus 15, both sides, so I get equals negative 8. So now I've got that other equation. Um, I have an, another equation in standard form with two variables, and we'll call this equation B. Just like we did using the elimination method, we've created now two equations with two variables. We'll get, we're going to solve this two-variable system for the value of the variables using whatever method we want, right? We can use elimination, we can use substitution, but now we have a, which is negative x plus 5z equals 17, and we have b, which is 8x minus 8z equals negative 8. So let's see, what I'm going to do is actually solve or isolate the variable x in equation A. That's the method I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use the substitution method. If you wanna use elimination at this point, it doesn't matter, okay, um, at this point, but I'm going to um, simplify this or manipulate it to get x all by itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract 5z from both sides. So negative x equals negative 5z plus 17. I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 to get x equals 5z minus 17. Okay, so that I've now solved or isolated the variable x in um, this equation. So now I'm going to take what x equals and I'm going to substitute it in for x in my other equation, right? So 8 times x, well, what are we substituting x with? Minus 8z equals negative 8. We're substituting x with 5z minus 17. And now let's simplify this and solve for the variable z. So 8 times 5z is 40z. And then 8 times negative 17 is negative 136, so minus 136 minus 8z equals negative 8. So now I'm going to combine like terms. 40z minus 8z is 32z. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 136 to both sides. So negative 8 plus 136 equals 128. And now to solve for the variable z, I need to do 128 divided by 32, and I get z equals 4. So now I've solved for the variable z, and I'm actually going to write that again over here. z equals 4. Okay, so now that we know the value of one variable, let's take that value and plug it into any one of these equations, right, a, b, or this one right here, and we solve for the variable x. So because x is already solved for in this equation, I'm actually going to substitute 4 in for z in this equation, right? So 5z minus x equals 5z minus 17 is the same is when I substitute 4 in for z, I get x equals 5 times 4, which is 20 minus 17. x equals 20 minus 17, so x equals 3. So now I've got the value of two variables. The very last step you're gonna do is substitute the variable values into any equation and solve for the remaining variables. So let's go back to our original th three equations and I can use any one of these equations, plug in those values for z and x and we'll solve for the value of y. So I'm actually going to choose um, equation three. Let's choose equation three. And you can choose any equation, right? It doesn't matter. So if I choose equation three, that's gonna be two x plus three y um, plus z equals seven. Okay, so, or you know what I'm gonna do? Let's redo this. I could, but look what I have right here. I've already solved for y right here. Y equals two x minus three z plus five. That actually seems like a better method y equals 2x minus 3z plus 5. So let's do that instead. Just changing it up. So I've manipulated the equation already. I can use that equation too. I don't have to use one of my original three equations. I've manipulated one, but it's still, it's still a balanced equation. So when I plug in these values, I'll still get the same answer. 
So that's y equals 2x minus 3z plus 5. So let's see. We're going to plug in 3 for x. So 2 times 3 minus 3 times 4 for z plus 5. Okay, so here we go. We get y equals 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So 6 minus 12 and then plus 5. And when I combine all of those together, I get y equals negative 1. So now I've solved for the values of those three variables. And we can again write them just like this, x, y, then z. So x is 3, y is negative 1, z is 4. And that concludes your notes over solving a three-variable system of equations using the substitution method. I hope it was helpful.